Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm going to be making a French country spring wreath. For my project today, I'm going to be using this foam ring that I had in my stash, and this is going to be the base for our wreath. I'm going to be laying down a generous amount of hot glue, and then for my background today of the wreath, I'm going to be using some forest moss. I do have this linked on my Amazon store. So I'm just going to be working my way around the wreath, applying that lovely forest moss and lots of that hot glue make sure you are being really careful if you're going to give this a try. I do tend to have a spatula around so that I can use that to press down on top of the glue so I don't burn myself. I'm going to be adding it around the entire wreath and saving the back section till last and I will of course be adding it to the back as well. I'm using a foam ring as my wreath base today, but of course you could use a grape vine wreath. One of those plain designs would be perfect. In fact, probably better than using the foam ring as sometimes I had to work extra hard to make sure that none of that white was visible underneath. So if you can use a grape vine wreath, that's probably a better alternative. You'll notice that I have sped up this footage quite a bit because it was a little bit time consuming and it was pretty messy. So make sure wherever you're doing this, you're able to sweep up or vacuum up that excess moss. Otherwise, it's going to make tidying up a little bit tricky. Once I've got the top part covered, you'll see I have flipped it over and now we're going to fill in the back section to make sure the entire foam ring is covered. I'm now going to move on to my foam eggs. I'm going to take Paint Couture's buttercream and I'm going to be using that as a base color on each of my eggs. I'm going to be doing a few different sizes here. This is the larger size that I'm going to be working with. I'm just going to apply one coat of this chalk paint and then once that's dry, I did then take some pine cone chalk paint. This is also by Paint Couture and I just have a little bit on my fan brush and I'm going to be doing some speckles all over the egg. Once I was happy with the coverage, I did then take a wet wipe and I did a little bit of dabbing on top of our wet speckles just to spread them out a little bit. We're going for a natural looking egg that's been found in the wild. I then took some of Paint Couture's Pitch Black and I'm just doing some more black speckles here. And again, I did take a wet wipe and I dabbed at some of those speckles just to give it more of an imperfect look. When that was dry, I took Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm just going to apply one light coat over the top of my egg and then I'm using a wet wipe to spread that glaze out, make it look a little bit patchy. Again, we're going for quite an earthy finish. I'll be repeating this look on about another three eggs of this size. I then moved on to my smaller eggs. I'm going to lay down a base of buttercream just like we did with the larger egg. And then I am taking some of that Van Dyke Brown Glaze and applying that over the top of my dry paint, just dabbing off some of that excess. And then once I'm happy with the coverage of that, I did then move on to doing some more speckles. This time I'm just going to add the pitch black speckles in this case. Now I'm going to move on to this little bird's nest that I had in my stash. I'm going to be adding some feathers. These are some that I had in my stash that I got from Spotlight Australia. And I'm going to be adding some hot glue to the inside of the nest and just placing a couple of the feathers inside. Next, I'm going to take a different kind of moss. This is also from Spotlight Australia. It's a bit of a brighter green, a little bit more plastic feeling this one, but I loved the color contrast. I'm gonna apply some glue over the top of the end parts of the feathers in the nest and then apply some more of that moss. I also mixed in a little bit of the forest moss as well. And now I am gluing down our smaller Easter eggs. I'm just adding two of those to the nest. 
Now I need to glue my nest to the wreath. So I've added some glue in the section where I want it to go. Then I'm pressing down firmly. And then I'm also going to start adding some more of that lighter green moss around the outside of the wreath in random spots. Also near the nest as well. Just anywhere that I feel like that brighter pop of green would look good. I then decided that I wanted to secure my nest down just a little bit more. So I'm going to take some florist wire and I'm just going to weave that through the bird's nest and then pull one end around one side of the wreath, another end around the other end. And then at the back, I'm going to secure it in place by twisting those two ends together. To hide that florist wire in the nest, I'm going to add a little bit more hot glue and then put a, another feather in place. And then I also did decide to add a little bit more uh, moss over the top of that as well. Next, I'm going to take these little pieces that I pulled off an Easter pick that I have been pulling apart over time. This is just some florist wire that also has a sort of moss effect on it. I'm just going to thread that through and underneath the florist wire that we added to secure the nest in place. And then I'm just having a play with the direction that those two pieces are going to have. I did then thread that other piece on the right hand side there through the nest once more just to get it going in the direction that I wanted. And I'm just going to continue adding a couple more pieces of this florist wire with the foam moss on it on each side until I'm happy with the look. I then took another piece of florist wire that has some little berries attached to it and I'm just going to put one stem on the left and one stem on the right. I felt like it was a nice pop of colour bringing that white in. I then took a mini bird's nest that I had in my stash and I'm actually going to pull that apart. This is actually a grape vine mini bird's nest. So I've pulled it apart and now I'm going to start wrapping it around our wreath there. So again, we're bringing in some different textures, some different movements. I'm not a wreath maker by any means. I'm just going with what I like the look of and what feels right. So I'm just winding that around and I will be adding little dabs of glue here and there wherever I feel it needs to go to keep those pieces in place. I ended up pulling apart another four bird's nest so that I could continue to wrap that grape vine material around the wreath and just continue that design around. Once I was happy with how that was looking, I then started to glue some more of those lovely speckled bird feathers in. So I've just started placing them wherever I felt like it looked right. I mainly concentrated them on the bottom half of the wreath, however. I also then started gluing down some of the smaller eggs. So again, this was just something that I did by eye based on how I wanted it to look. And I did also alternate in a couple of the larger eggs as well. Underneath the larger egg there, I decided to bring in a bit more of that light green moss and also another feather.
I had a couple of eggs that I'd previously painted that were actually already attached to florist wire. So I just sort of pushed those in underneath some of the other wires we already had down anywhere that I felt needed a little bit more body. As I was adding things to the wreath, I also tried to pull away a lot of that hot glue stringiness that you get when you're using hot glue. I just tried to do that as I went. I added one more of the faux moss covered branches and then I took some Spanish moss that I got from Amazon. I have that linked in my Amazon store and I just started placing that on the interior bottom section. And again, this brought in just another lovely neutral color and some different textures. This stuck and clung pretty well to the base that I already had down, but in some areas I did add some more hot glue to secure it in place. The final touch on our wreath today is going to be this dried gypsophila that I had in my stash and I am just pulling little bits of it off and pushing it in place. I love the extra body that this gives, the lovely lighter tone that it gives and honestly I just feel like it does feel very spring-like now that we've brought in some florals. I wanted to keep my wreath somewhat neutral. So if you wanted to go a little bit more colorful, at this point, you could come in with some brighter colored flowers on your design. And here's a look at our finished French country spring wreath. I love how this turned out. It has a lovely, neutral, natural look to it. And I think it would look beautiful displayed throughout spring and Easter, any time of year, really. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the paint products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.